What is going on guys, Pound the Shop, and tonight I'm going to tell you why these Keith Black Pistons and these Hypertectic Pistons have a bad rap. Let's check it out. So I know a lot of this stuff in this video I probably talked about before, but I want to make sure the information is out there because I keep getting the same emails. Every few months I keep getting the same email of guys building their first engine or maybe their second engine and um, they have catastrophic failure. Let me show you a picture of a uh, subscriber, Billy out in Nevada with his um, circle tracker. He, he built this 3D3 Stroker. He took the cam specs from the Dingle Ball 2 and he actually built a motor similar to what I just dyno tested with Alan Gold, except it's got Vortec heads on it. So the thing ran strong, ran fantastic. Um, and once they started getting into it and getting the some more timing into it, getting the tune up right, the, the, the thing made it about five laps, totally exploded. And then the, the carnage is unbelievable. So originally he thought maybe he had some sort of valve train, piston the valve thing. And I, I wasn't really suspecting that just because of the pistons he used and I know how much clearance it should have had. And the first thing that came to mind, because I've again seen this several times now, is how much piston ring gap did you run? So piston ring gap. <laughs> When you put your piston in, your piston rings, when this factor right here, whatever it ends up being in your finished bore, that gap is your piston ring end gap. And the big problem this is a big pet peeve, and I'll go, I'll go off on this in a second, is these hyper eutectic pistons need more ring gap. And guys, guys, just follow the basic chart, which is four thou per, per inch of bore. So it would be like 16 thou on a four inch bore. But it's not enough. And the difference between 16 thou and 26 thou could be the life or death of that engine, believe it or not. 10 thousandths of an inch is all it takes to, for that ring to actually butt up. So that's what happens. So when you get enough heat into these, and the hyperdetective, the way they absorb the heat and where the ring land sits, there, a lot of heat gets into this top ring. And it gets hotter and hotter and hotter until eventually they touch. They bend up, so not, you're not gonna break this. Well, you will, but not, it's gonna break the piston first. It's gonna butt up and then it's gonna bend, buckle, break the piston, and then it's just carnage after that. And that's what we see it happen to Billy here. He did, not, he did not run enough ring gap. So I asked him what factor did he use? And he was over 10 thou shy of what how much ring cap he should have had. And that's, I guess, where I think um, the piston manufacturers, and the, just like these hypers we're running from this Eagle kit, there should be either more pre-gap in the rings, or uh, they should have a sticker on the box, because these novice engine builders, not everyone is a professional engine builder uh, and, and know exactly what's going on all the time. A lot of these guys are attempting their first builds and there's always lots to learn. You're gonna keep learning and learning as you build every engine. But there needs to be more of a warning put on these boxes for these hyper eutectic pistons saying how much minimum ring gap you should have on a, on a 430 bore, which is what we're doing right here. And it ends up being about 27 thousandths of an inch. So if you only ran 16 thousand like the old school theory, and your minimum is 27,000. That's a big difference in ring gap. That's a huge difference in ring gap. And 27,000 uh, 27, seems like a lot. And you're like, oh, it's gonna huff smoke and all that stuff. It won't, it won't. That's just, that's what they call for. So hyper eutectics start at about six and a half thousandths per inch of bore, uh, and it goes up from there. So when you start adding in racing, so you'll end up with about 8,000 uh, ring gap per inch of bore. Boosted, you'll have, uh, end up with more. Towing, you'll end up with more because you're putting more heat into that piston and ring, causing more expansion. So, so no, they need to put a sticker or something because this is too much damage that I keep seeing from customers. And with the prices of things, people can't afford. They might have blown all their all their beer money on this one build, and they just blew it up in no time because of a simple thing like ring gap. So I'm hoping. We can uh, we can get some more information out there and help guys prevent this because it, it breaks my heart every time I see it because I know how much money this stuff costs and a lot of us were just trying to we just want to build our hot rods 
and we may not have huge budgets. So sometimes these builds that we've been dreaming of for a while, just totally, it's totally avoidable and totally, you know, per, to stop just some, something so silly as, as enough ring gap from just completely destroying our engine. So, and then just to make guys feel better, I've done it. I did it years ago. Um, I kind of knew I was doing it, but I built an engine for NA purposes and end up running it with some boost, knowing I was pushing the limit. It was actually fine um, until I hot lapped it. And then once you get enough heat into that, again, butt broke the piston. But I was lucky enough that I saved the block. Uh, it wasn't too much damage. I actually broke it in the burnout, doing the burnout at the drag strip. So, um, but it happens. And, and I was luckier than most. And most of the time, I guys, when I see it, it's just pure carnage, just like Billy's here. And it's super unfortunate just with the price of everything. So, so to summarize this video, are Hyper Eutectic Pistons bad? No, they're fantastic. We use them all the time. They're actually really strong and they're actually really good pistons for the money. Keith Black gets a bad rap and the reason they get a bad rap is because they break and they break because of the piston ring gap. If the rings wouldn't butt up, they wouldn't break under normal circumstances. So just remember that the biggest thing is always get your ring gap information from the piston manufacturer, not the ring company, doesn't matter what they say, you wanna talk and get the information from the piston manufacturer. Also, look at how much um, wall clearance you have. If you're running a performance build, it's not a bad idea to actually end up with an extra thou clearance on your uh, hyperutectic piston. If you're really getting into it, racing, nitrous, anything like that, you're better off a little loose and a little tight. You don't wanna get overboard, but typically about a thou more piston wall clearance will keep you out of trouble. Um, and uh, just again, make sure ring gap's good, piston wall is good, and that you shouldn't have any problems with your hyper eutectic pistons, even in a 500 horsepower 383 stroker. If you have any questions, comment below. If you've run into this kind of stuff, comment below. If you're one of the guys that were on, uh, had one of these unfortunate mishaps with your piston rings uh, and pistons no, no longer staying together. Um, and don't forget hit hit that like and subscribe button. I got videos coming up about the 3D3 stroker that I ran with Alan Gold. I know a lot of guys have questions about that. And we got a lot more content coming up. Thanks guys. <laughs>